Hello there, everybody. This is ShadowGear65 here, doing a review of Felicia the Water Dragon. Oh, it's a system mock. Da 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 da. But no, really, uh, this is um, not really. A, I, I I don't think it's a system mock, but a lot of people would disagree with me. So I I don't know. But yeah, this is Felicia the Water Dragon. She is a water dragon. So way back, uh, some of you may remember the fact that I reviewed uh, the Elves Water Dragon set, which is still. You listen to the podcast. Um, a lot of the dragons are still available, but some of them aren't. The water dragon in particular is still very much available. And a lot of it, a lot of those sets are on like, they're really like 10 or 12 bucks. If you can find this set, get it. I still recommend it. The water dragon set is so good. So I just, I wanted to make a mock with this. And a while back, I had the idea of taking the original dragon head here and then making that a chest design. I think it totally friggin' works. I think it looks super cool, but I'll get to that in a moment. And so I had, <laughs> I've had this for a while now, I had a whip on my Instagram to make a water dragon mock. I was sitting on it for the better part of a year and then finally decided to build it up. And now I have Felicia, who I finished technically, I'd say about three months ago. But I would needed these kind of hair pieces that I thought I had two in white. I only had one in white. I needed to order another one. And it's something I kept neglecting to do until I finally had a Bricklink order where the store had that particular piece. So I ordered it. Now she's done. <laughs> so yeah, here is Felicia. Uh, in terms of a story, a background, uh, there's not really anything big. She's just kind of like this like bubbly personality who forgets things a lot. She has some water manipulation powers. She has slight mind reading. Like she can pick up on what you're thinking or what you're feeling uh, if, she, if she like concentrates and thinks on it. And she's also extremely curious. So like she... Like, the main inspiration for this mock is, um, the main inspiration is Jabril from No Game No Life. It's an anime, where there's anime. Uh, but, um, she does other, other inspirations in this thing, too. Uh, I think it looks, generally looks cool. I've always wanted to make a mock that had butt wings. And I feel like the butt wings is one of the best parts about this mock. Uh, not those wings, uh, but in fact, these wings. So, um, I'm going to keep them down like this for the majority of the review because it helps her stand up and you'll understand why I need to do that in a moment. But, uh, yeah, these wings are totally posable. They're operated on the mixel joints. So, you can have them kind of set out like this. And that looks totally cool! I, I love the way that looks, especially with the trans purple on, on the ends there. I, I think it's a very, very cool looking idea, very cool looking mock, and... I just, I usually keep the wings folded down on my shelf in case she falls over, but it looks so nice having this here. Like, I'm really tempted to build a stand for her so she can, like, be in, like, a flying position. Uh, but let's get down to the feet. So the feet, I think, are tiny. Uh, they're tiny, and they look cute. Uh, my main idea for making them small is because one, I wanted to make small feet. And two, for a species of dragon girl who... A species of dragon girl... For a species that mainly has wings and doesn't necessarily need feet, why would you need to evolve to have large feet? So, I don't know. Just small little nubs. Uh, I feel like it's a really cool design. I like the effect of having that little white axle pop up on the top because it gives her like the effect of like a toenail of some sort. Um, but these are little like little eggshell pieces, eggshell little left arm pieces that act as like the foot. Um, it's more stable than you think, and because of the way this is connected. There's the ball joint of the actual hand connector, and then there's the um, the mixel joint. Oh, there's eyes in the back of the heels, oh! Uh, there are mixel joints inside the leg here. I need to focus. Uh, oh, I, oh! Hello there. Hello there, fella. You look creepy. Uh, but there's also a mixel joints on the inside of the ankles there. So that can move in there, and then also move with the ball joint. So there's a lot of... Not only there's a lot of posability, there's a lot of um, kind of leeway for you to balance all of this together. I think that totally works. Um, so there is that. I need to put this back in order. The lower legs um, are a tad bit of a mess. Not a mess in terms of like structural instability, but it, like I think it looks. This is probably the one thing I kind of regret like fixing. I guess. So on the lower legs, um, 
One of the most distracting things on this thing is that there's that piece jutting out there and that piece jutting out there. It was originally a clean thing right across to make that a little bit better. And I took it out because when you bend the leg of this mock, when that, when it, in the first design, you would bend it, and but that lower leg piece, like from this piece here, that would snap right off because there was it wasn't a secure connection. Like it was just connected by two studs, and if you pulled the leg back to bend it like a normal leg, it would fall off. So I adjusted it so whenever you bend the leg, it's totally stable, totally fine. It just came out of sacrifice of that. There's maybe another way to make it look better, but I don't, I don't really know. Yo, I heard you guys like hips, so we put hips inside your hips, and we got Hip City. Uh, so yeah, uh, as I mentioned, uh, the leg does bend. It's, I don't believe it's a, whoa, I don't believe it's a full 90. Yeah, it's, um, it's just about there. I mean, again, I'm not aiming for crazy action poses, but for subtle little poses where she can bend her leg and such, I think that totally works. So, the hips, I feel like, the, I feel like I say hips, but this is actually the upper leg design. Uh, she has hips, though. I think it looks super cool. I probably could stand and add more purple in here somewhere. I didn't really have anything on hand. But, uh, oh, there's her weapon. There's that, too. Uh, but I think that looks cool. I, I think it's a very nice look to have um, these, like, large slope pieces up here. And that gives a nice curved look. A very feminine-looking mock. And I feel like, despite this being, like, mostly a system mock... I think I got, like, the curves on this thing to look really nice. Especially when you get, in, like, the waist into the torso with the dragon head. I think it looks totally great. Um, but yeah, in terms of the hips and the posability, uh, the head lips can move out. Wings, you know, kind of get in the way. Hips can move out about that much. And the leg can move forward, kind of like a T-crotch thing, so it can't move directly in front because um, her crotch here, like, because it's sloped. Kind of hinders that articulation a bit. And I don't think it can move back. Yeah, it can move back a little bit, but not that much. Uh, the wings I already covered. Uh, the wings, uh, there's a main joint here attached to the hip. Uh, there are the two here for the separate wings. There's a hinge joint here. You kind of splay that out. And then this is kind of like a mixel joint slash pin connection. So you can have those kind of fling up, fly around, fly around. All that you desire. I have like these like miniature burps that are going on in my body, so if you're hearing those, I apologize. <laughs> uh, but yeah, there's that. Then we get into um, like the general waist. The waist is fine. It's just more so, it's a product of like I need to fill in these gaps and make it look nice. So make it look like whoa, make it look like this. <laughs> so yeah, there's that. Uh, she does have waist articulation, but it's a bit of a bother. So you see how that head is connected there. There is that. Uh, so. If I do this, that frees up that joint. Because the, the, the top of this dragon head, or rather the front of this dragon head, like kind of clips into the like part of that hand connector. Because that's a hand connector in there. I don't know if you can kind of tell. But then she has a bit more freedom to move around, but then at some point she just snaps right off. So there is waist articulation, but it's very um oh. There we go. It's more hassle than it's worth. So I typically just have that dragon head clipped right into there. And this is um one of the things I talk about when I think like, oh, this mock has really good curves. Looking at it from the side, just something like this. Because you, like, you have kind of like the feminine hips. This isn't meant to be like a super sexy dragon mock. It's just it came out that way. And I'm proud of myself, not because this thing would be arousing in some regard. I'm proud of it because I got these curves with a system mock. And I think that's kind of rad. But yeah, using the dragon head totally works. I put stickers over the eyes because why would like I debated on just like taking an eraser or rubbing alcohol and just taking the print off in general. But I decided let's just put just some stickers over it. And I don't feel like it's super distracting. I think it totally works. I think it I think it's totally fine. It implies there are eyes there, but there are no eyes. I think it totally looks cool. The arm fell off, but now you can see more detail. <laughs> um but yeah, there's that. It's a lot of garbled mess back here. I mean, you're meant to look at the front, not the back. But the back looks okay. At least I got all the colors right in terms of like everything looks white, so it all blends in still. Having this little flag piece kind of... There we go. Kind of covers up all that. So, that certainly helps. Um, the chest, not to talk about like chest size. But the detailing I have in here is nice. Um, I originally had... Um, 
a green uh, one by one tile in there for detail. Uh, I got a couple of comments of people saying like, oh, maybe you shouldn't have that much lime green. Lime green looks weird. I wanted to keep it for the eye color. And in fact, the gems on the wings and the wrists there look a little bit odd. I agree with that. Maybe I should change those to a different color. Um, but I think it looks fine for now. But uh, this was originally green. I changed it to white because it looks a little bit better. Uh, I don't have a one by one tile in purple. If I did, I would have made this purple. But I don't have it on me. But the detail, like the horns coming out here, the dragon ears from the head kind of make like this flayed out detail here, and then the horns going into that. Very nice look. I think it looks super friggin' great. Uh, another thing I'm proud of is the upper arm design. I think it looks super cool, and I uses a piece that I've really been wanting to get more of. Uh, so this Hero Factory armor, or rather CCBS armor, is connected by stud, which is not the most secure connection in the world, but it's secure enough. And then you have this kind of purple dragon wing hanging out on the side. And how that's connected uh, is a little bit interesting. I wonder how well I can do this right now. Uh, it's connected by using... don't know how well you can see that. That wasn't even on camera. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, so there is a little clear piece right here. It's um, it's a one-by-one one rounded stud with a like kind of lightsaber rod like peg attached to the top. So that's connected into this side armor here, and then there's just like some system modified plates connecting everything else together. So that totally works. Um, at one point you could have these tiny wings kind of swivel on that point, but uh, ever since I added the chain detailing to the upper arms, you kind of can't do it. Like they're kind of stationary there. And there's a moment where that falls off. Which actually is the first time that's happened. Like, it, it actually never fell off during the, the photo shoot. But it falls off now because, you know, I'm being filmed. And someone's watching me. Somebody's watching me! Got no privacy. Oh, she's bouncing. Oh, there we go. <laughs> this is as unprofessional as usual. Yeah, upper arm's cool. I think that looks really cool. I like the chain detailing. Uh, originally, this mock was going to have some detail of chains more pronounced. Like, I originally designed to have, um, there's a mixel that's, um, this treasure chest crab, and it comes with a one-by-one -one tile of, like, um, a key lock. That was originally supposed to go in the chest, and then her wings were going to be covered up in chains. So she wasn't going to be able to fly, but she would still have the wings. And I feel like, no, part of the reason this mock looks so cool is because she has these wings. Let's not cover them up in chains. But part of me actually thinks I should have kept that piece right there in the chest. I don't know. It's fine. And then, lower arms in the hands. It's exactly what it looks like. Just using more of that dark turquoise and then purple armor. Totally looks cool. The thing I'm... I, I lied. The thing I'm actually thinking the most proud of on this mock is the head. So the head, if you couldn't already tell, is a modified version of Vespa's head. Vespa is this wasp girl that I have. And it's using a protector foot as the main base of the head and then it builds on top of that and the crux of it is it uses minifigure arms and hands to act as the eyes and so how that works is that um there's a bunch of system garbly gook here for the front of the face and like the nose and the mouth uh and then it uses a lightsaber rod going through that section and then it takes the two minifigure arms and then it clamps on and then it frictions into that little piece there I wonder how well I can do this on camera without really fucking it up. So it does that, and then you can kind of just peel that off. So that's what the face looks like, and then with it detached, uh, this is the general idea as to how the face connects, because those two little pegs that were in the minifigure arms, you can just use that to connect right in. And then that totally, totally works. Oh, hold on. Got this. Oh, oh, it fell apart. Okay. Oh, B B R B as the kids say in the street. There we go. But yeah, that's how that's connected. Uh, and it's more filled in than the Vespa head. This whole front piece on the front of the face, I think, totally helps that look, that image. Like whenever I do an update of Vespa, I want to try and incorporate something more like this into it. Uh, and then I think my other favorite part is the hair and the horns. So you have these pieces here connecting on the side, and then you have these little horns that are jutting out to add more of that 
dragon look detail. Oh man, there's so much I love about this mock in terms of like little details I've added. And then you get to the hair, which is held together by a chain, which is exactly what I did on Shadow, which I think is really funny. Completely unintentional. But uh, yeah, the hair is somewhat posable. I say that as that piece just falls off. Uh, but I mean, in theory, I mean, there are these... Oh, you got these clips here attached to the protector head. In theory, you could move those around, but I think I put so much junk in here now, I can't actually move it. Uh, but it's fine. Head does uh, all the posability you want. It's stable. It's not like... If, as long as you hold it by the sides here when you pose it, it's totally... It's totally okay. It works out fine. And uh, she does have a weapon. Uh, her weapon in particular is just kind of an afterthought, to be honest with you. I mean, this is just a little trident uh, I found when I was sorting through some parts. And I'm like, oh yeah, it's a really cool piece. I want to use it for something. And so it has a little water crystal on the, on the thing there, chain wrapped around it. And then she can just like peg it into her hand there with a little lightsaber rod. And that's how it works. And then for storage, uh, it does interfere with the neck articulation a little bit, but I just kind of peg it. Right back here. So you really can't see it in the silhouette. And yeah, that's that's Felicia. I super love the look of this mock. I love like these are some of my like purple and dark turquoise. This dark purple and dark turquoise are awesome colors, and I love putting them together. Uh I kinda wanna make more Dragon Girls using this as like the base body and whatever, but like I also don't want to rehash everything. Oh! Something I just thought of. I'm so sorry. Um, no one mentioned this, but I th I was surprised no one did. Uh, she doesn't have a tail. And that's legit just an oversight. I didn't think to give her a tail. Uh, but hey, if I make other mocks with this, uh, from the same species... Tails? Sure. But yeah, that's Felicia. Uh, also, why she doesn't have a crazy name and just a regular human name? I couldn't think of anything else. And so I named her like I named my Pokemon, where I just look at them and go, You look like X name. And I just named her like that. Her name's Felicia. <sighs> so yeah, that is the mock. I hope you all enjoyed the review. And uh, in the meantime, um, I'm gonna get you. Fuck you, you dingus.